Here's five ways you can highlight a subject in a photo. So with all of these, the key thing to do is cut out your subject at the beginning. I didn't wanna go through this process in this video, but I do have another video showing how to cut out a player, but you can see I removed these from the background and I have one layer we called cut out and one layer for background. So we're gonna be putting adjustment layers over this background layer to really draw our attention to our two cutouts in the middle. First, we have the black and white background. If you go down to your adjustment layers, and there's a ton of ways to do this, we're gonna go up to black and white, and you can see we already have the desired effect. With black and white, you can adjust these sliders as needed. The grass is very green in this image, so if we drop the greens down, you can see the grass gets darker. You can play with the blues of the sky. The next thing you can do is use gradient maps to highlight your subjects. And let's go down to our adjustment layers to gradient map. And again, you can see it's another way to make an image black and white. The gradient map, I actually like using a lot for black and white effects. You can adjust these sliders to make your black and white filter as you see fit, either super contrasted or not very contrasted. You can move this middle slider around. But basically we can control any of these colors. So if we wanted like, a red and white background, or maybe we want to eyedropper this blue on the guy who's catching it, his jersey. So, oh yeah, you can't eyedropper when you have the mask selected, which is a weird default for Photoshop. So make sure the gradient map itself is selected. And then when you open it, click on the darkest color here and let's click this blue on the jersey. Now we've got this nice blue to white gradient, a little bit more interesting than just the standard black and white, but still very effective. The next thing you can do is desaturate the image. So if you didn't wanna go this full color background route, we can drop an adjustment layer, again, just above the background for hue and saturation. And this will probably be a little bit more subtle of an effect, but if you basically just drop the saturation down, you can play with this as you see fit, but basically you can see Everything else is a bit more muted now. The, the pop of color is happening just for our subjects, which is what we like. You can also play with the lightness and even the hue of this background, like if you wanted it darkened or brightened. And you can also colorize the whole thing, which is similar to a gradient map. If you wanted it all to be red or green or blue, whatever it is, this hue and saturation adjustment layer is a good one to further spotlight your players. And one thing that's fun to do is playing around with the masking on some of this stuff. So if we get rid of the colorization and we just have this desaturated look for the background, maybe we just want the desaturation to hit the edges of the photo. So what we can do is there's a mask on this hue and saturation layer. And now if I go to my brush tool and I'm gonna blow up like a, a very big soft brush there it is. And basically just brushing in black, we're gonna hide the middle part of this layer. So I'm just gonna click once with my black brush selected and a soft brush, very big in the middle, just gonna click. And you can see the color is kind of returned to this middle section. If it's hard to see on video, I can bring down the saturation further and you can see we have color here, we don't have color on the edges, but up to you how significant you want this effect to be. If it's ever too much, you can always bring down the opacity of any of these adjustment layers. The next effect we can do is just dimming the whole background. So to do that, I'm gonna turn off this hue and saturation layer. Let's make a new layer and hitting G for my fill tool with a black foreground color. I'm gonna fill this background just with pure black and then we'll bring the opacity down to like let's say 40. So you can see the background is a lot dimmer. Again, brings our attention to front and center, our subjects that are going for the disc. And similar to the hue and saturation, you could take the same mask that we use, just the, the soft dot in the middle, and I'm gonna hold option and click and drag this mask up to our black layer to apply it. And now you can see this kind of spotlight effect where it has masked out the black dimming layer from the middle of the design and it's gradually fading out. So it's kind of like an extreme vignette almost, or if we wanted to ramp up the opacity more, again, just further brings you in to where we want the viewer to focus. And you can also do this gradual fade from either the top or bottom for a slightly different effect. Let's get rid of the current mask by right-clicking, delete layer mask, let's make a new one. And then with our gradient tool 
selected, we can hold shift and just click and drag up with a black foreground color to hide the dimming on the bottom part of the photo. And if we want to increase the opacity, you can see it just creates this darkness at the top of the design, almost like they're jumping out of the image. The last thing we'll do is a blurred background effect. You can see, I'm gonna delete these layers. There's already a slight blur happening, but if we wanna exaggerate it, what we can do is blur the background even more behind our subjects. And first, before you do any blurring, I would definitely recommend editing out the player cutouts, otherwise you get this glow around your subjects. So to do that, I'm going to command click our mask of our cutout here, and it selected them on our background layer. So now going up to select, modify, and expand, we're gonna expand by three pixels, and then hitting W for our quick selection tool, you can right click anywhere in the selection, and what we wanna do is content aware fill this area. So I'm gonna go down to content aware fill, Photoshop is gonna take its best guess of what you want to fill it with, basically deleting these things from the image. And you'll see it does a pretty rough job. Obviously this is not pretty looking, but it's okay. Doesn't matter, it's all gonna get blurred anyway. Doesn't matter too much, I should say. So with our background layer, and we can bring our cutouts back in, so we still have them on the separate layer. With the background layer selected, let's go up to filter, convert for smart filters so we can make edits non-destructively. And then the blur we're gonna use, if you go up to filter, blur gallery, tilt shift, this one allows you to do this gradual blur, which is cool. So it starts at this center circle. Basically this is setting the plane of the blur. So I'm gonna move it by our front subject's feet. And you can see it's gonna do a gradual fade from this line to the dotted line, and then the same thing on bottom. So let's get a pretty narrow fields, and I'm just looking at the background mainly to see how much blur we want there because it's not affecting our player cutouts. They're gonna stay perfectly sharp, which is good. And then you can affect the amount of blur either with this slider here or up here on the top right. So we can reduce it a bit to kind of create a more gradual and potentially more realistic blur effect. So you can see the before and after Again, just further separates the cutouts from the background, drawing attention to what we care about most in the image. You should also feel free to use any combinations of these effects in your designs, and you can combine it with things like text or logos in the background going behind the subjects. Hopefully these five effects can give you some inspiration.